and uh, I hope that it would be a great exam. Um, that uh, first previous exam, I feel that you had a good exam, great exam rather, and this exam is also going to be a good one. So, um, and, and um, uh, it will be in the uh, month of November as well. So, uh, yes, uh, this time grammar will be there. So, uh, in next class, I will tell in the grammar. Yes, with the, um, uh, yes, grammar will be there. And the grammar, you know, uh, the syllabus is the same that we had completed in class 10, that error correction, uh, the gap filling, uh, you know, rearrange. So, this kind of thing will be there, you know. So, grammar will be there this time. Uh, we will discuss about grammar syllabus as well. So, no problem. I feel it would be very easy. English is always easy. And I feel that you should find English uh, become easier in class 11. Okay. So, let us resume that where we left before Fuja vacation. Uh, so, let me tell you that what happened so far because you people uh, remain detached from uh, reading for a good uh, seven days or ten days uh, because of Puja vacation. But I feel that you are having strong memory and you remember that um, so far we had completed in Mother's Day. Before vacation we started Mother's, uh, Mother's Day and uh, still we are continuing with it, uh, the drama. So far it happened that uh, the, the two main characters, Mrs. Pearson and Mrs. Fitzgerald, they have interchanged their soul and uh, Mrs. Fitzgerald had taken the responsibility to control Mrs. Pearson's uh, 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 you know, family and uh, being Mrs. Pearson, she was actually residing at, uh, at, at Mrs. Pearson's house. Residing means she was staying in the Mrs. Pearson's house. And uh, we know that son came, son Doris came, uh, sorry, son Cyril came and uh, daughter Doris, uh, they, they came and uh, they had been heavily uh, insulted by the mother and they were confused uh, that what had happened to their mother, they actually decided that what might be the possibility, what might be the reason that why mother was behaving in such a, um, in such a way. And, uh, but they could not get any satisfactory answer to them. Uh, now, uh, it's time that uh, George Pearson, the husband, uh, is going to face um, Mrs. Fitzgerald. You know, and uh, now we will start from today. I'm reading uh, from page number 43. Yes, from page number 43 here. Uh, we, we completed here that uh, last speech of Mrs. Pearson over there. Stop blubbering, you are not baby. If you are old enough to go with Charlie Spence, you are old enough to behave. Well. Now stop it. Up to this we completed before vacation. So let's resume from there. I hope you remembered the story and remember what happened so far. So let's start. George Pearson interslept. George Pearson, first time this character is getting introduced uh, in the drama, the, the character, the first, George Pearson. So, uh, he is the, uh, he is the, you know, husband to Mrs. Pearson. Now George Pearson comes and interslept. He is about 50, fundamentally decent, but solemn, self-important, pompous. Here, pompous, self-important, Solemn means very severe, she is serious all the time, dignified, and pompous and self-important was something, uh, something the same word, you know, self-important means having, um, uh, having a good idea about, having a very gorgeous idea about himself, this is Mrs., uh, Mr. George Pearson, and uh, he is uh, about 50. Now, preferably, he should be a heavy, slow-moving type. He notices Doris's tears. And uh, heavy, his plume as well as a fatty man. And uh, he moves very slowly. But uh, he is having a, a dignified outlook. Uh, and uh, um, actually, he is not so um, funny character. Uh, is having as if having uh, the weighty presence. And that is self-important. And, and always I have actually a very elaborated thought about himself. This is Mr. George Pearson. Now he enters and whenever he enters, he saw that uh, his daughter Doris was crying. Now here he notices Doris's tears. Now what happened? Now George, hello, what's this? Can't be anything to cry about. The daughter is, uh, the son is telling, you know, the, the father and the father, father always pampered the child. And here, father 
you know, father was something like these. That father also did not bother about, father does not bother about our son, our daughter, uh, sorry, his son, his daughter, that what they do. Um, he, he actually uh, does bother less for them. Now, the father is telling, hello, what's this? He's asking to his daughter, what's this? Can't be anything to cry about. Nothing has happened to cry. What has happened? Uh, Doris, through sobs. He, you, you will see, you will see, see, sobs, sobs means a continuing crying. Now, daughter is telling, you will see. You know, Doris lands out clipped with a sob or two on the way. George stares after her a moment and looks at Mrs. Pierce. And now, after telling this, you will see the daughter runs out of that room and father looks at the door when the daughter runs out and then looks at Mrs. Pearson. Don't forget, this is actually Mrs. Fitzgerald. We, the reader, only know, but all the other characters, they don't know this. Now, George, did she say, you will see, actually George could not, or George was not sure that what a daughter has told to him. So, to, to be sure, he was asking to his wife, that did she say, you will see. Now, wife, though this is Mrs. Fitzgerald, yes, George, what did she mean? The father is asking. Now, the conversation between father and mother, the father is telling, what did she mean? What did she want to say? Mrs. Pearson, better ask her. Wife is telling. You know, Mrs. Pearson was also, uh, sorry, Mr. Mr. Pearson was also surprised because you now whenever uh, he used to talk to his wife, his wife um, did not talk in such a way as at present his wife is talking to him. So he was also surprised, you know. Now George looks slowly again at the door, then at Mrs. Pearson. Again, George looks slowly at the door and then Mrs. Pearson. Then he notices the stout that Mrs. Pearson raises for another sip. And he saw that um, uh, his wife was about to give a sip to that stout. The wife, his wife was drinking. His eyes almost burned. Burned means as if his eyes almost came out, you know because of surprise, because of astonishment, his, his, his eyes as if this came out, his eyes are almost burned. George Stout saying this, Stout, because in his life, uh, George, Mr. George Pearson uh, had not experienced, <coughs> had not seen that his wife drinks. Now for the first time, he saw wife, his wife drinking and that is why he was so much surprised and shouted stout a Pearson yes white remained so calm yes and George amazed what are you drinking stout for what for means why we know what for means why so here George is asking to his wife why are you drinking stout a Pearson the wife is turning because I fancied some, fancied means I, I, I wanted to have, I wished to have stout, uh, George. At this time of day, it was late afternoon, late afternoon, don't forget. So George is telling, at this time of day, uh, Pearson, yes, what's wrong with it at this time of day? No, uh, 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 you know, uh, here, uh, wife is telling, what's wrong with it? What's the problem if I, if I drink? No, George, bewildered. George was surprised. Nothing, I suppose. Annie, Annie is the name of Mr. P Mrs. Pearson. Annie Pearson. Annie, but I have never seen you do it before. George is telling. I have never seen you do it before. No, wife is telling. Well, you are seeing it now. Wife, you know, has very rough and tough character. Wife is telling. Okay, you have not seen. Uh, you you have not seen before. But now you are seeing. You just watch me. I'm drinking now. George, with heavy distaste, with heavy distaste means getting disgusted, disappointed. Yes, and I don't like it. He is telling, yes, I don't like it. It doesn't look right. I'm surprised at you. The husband is telling to the wife, yes, I don't like it. It, it doesn't look right. You know, being the wife, uh, being my wife, uh, being a lady, you were just drinking a uh, uh, stout, uh, drinking wine this late afternoon. I don't like it. 
George. No, uh, here, Pearson. You know, uh, the wipe. Wipe is telling. It must be some... T uh, uh, no, sorry, sorry. Yes. I, I, I am surprised at it. The husband is telling to... Uh, the husband is telling to the wife. I am surprised at you. Well, the wife is telling. Well, that ought to be a nice change for you. Ought to mean should. And that should be a nice change to you. The wife is telling. Wife is not apologizing. Oh, don't mind. I am drinking and all this. No, no, no. Wife is not telling something else. Wife is telling. Oh, that might be a nice change for you. Or oh, that should be a nice change for you. Now, here husband is telling. What do you mean? What do you want to mean by this? Now, wife. It must be some time since you were surprised at me, George. My wife is telling, oh, it must be surprised. Means many days ago, you were surprised at me. So it's good that today again you have surprised at me. Many days ago, you were surprised at me. <coughs> so it's good today you got surprised on me. So it's good. Now, George, I don't like surprises. George, the husband is telling, oh, I don't want to be surprised. I'm all for a steady going on. I just, I, I want a steady, uh, steady flow of life. You know, I don't want to be surprised. You ought to know that by this time, you know, by this time, uh, by this very time, this late afternoon, I don't want this. By the way, I forget to tell you this morning, I wouldn't want any tea. Uh, the husband is telling. I forgot to tell you that uh, this, this morning, I don't want to get any tea. Special snooker match night at the club tonight and a bit of supper going on. So, no tea. Yeah, husband is telling. Okay, in the morning I have forgotten to tell you that um, in the club we're having snooker night. Snooker, you know, one kind of game. Snooker night, snooker special, snooker uh, match will be there. Here, that uh, a snooker match night at the club tonight. Uh, no, this is the habit of Mr. George Pearson that every day he goes to the club. And uh, George is telling to his wife that today, this, this morning, that morning, actually that morning, he had forgotten to tell him that uh, no any tea, any supper. And, and not only that, the match will be followed by a bit of supper. Supper means dinner. So, no tea, George is telling to his wife. I'm having a snooker match at the club. I will have my tea there. I will have my dinner there. So, no tea. Mrs. Pearson, wife is telling, that's all right, there isn't any. Oh, wife is telling, that's all right, okay. You don't want to take any tea, oh, it's good, it's good. There isn't any, there isn't any, means I have not prepared tea, that's good. Now George astonished. George was very much surprised. You mean you didn't get any tea ready? Oh, what has happened, you know, so serious. It's, it's a great matter, as if it appears a great matter. What? The wife had not prepared tea for him. It was a great catastrophe as if. Uh, here, here, the husband is, see the husband's, uh, you know, reaction. You mean you didn't get any ready? You mean you told, uh, the husband is telling to the wife. You mean that tea is not ready for me? Yes, and a good thing too. And it's, it's turned out, the wife is telling yes. The tea is not ready and, and it's a good thing. It stand out means it appears to be a good thing because had I prepared the tea, it, it, it might have been wasted because you would not take tea. You just told it. So it's a good thing. The wife is telling. No, George, aggravated. Aggravated means now he is getting aggressive. That's all very well, but suppose I had wanted some. <coughs> Husband is telling. Okay. That's very good, but suppose I had wanted some tea. Then what would happen? Now see, this is more dramatic, isn't it? If he wanted tea, how much time it would take to prepare a cup of tea? It's a matter of two min three minutes, four minutes, maximum five minutes. So, what would happen? It's more dramatic, you know. But but you know, as the habit is that whenever they would come to the home, tea should be prepared by that time. This was the habit. The George, Doris, Cyril, everyone's. As if um, uh, they have granted uh, Mrs. Pearson uh, as, their, as their servant. Whenever they would come to their home, tea must be prepared by that time. Means tea must not be prepared after they would come to their home. This should be the, as if this is a ritual. 
So here, I'm getting aggravated, getting aggressive, the husband is asking. But suppose I had wanted, wanted, uh, wanted some? Had I, had I, had I wanted some tea? Then what do you do? Pearson, my goodness. Listen to the man. Pearson is, uh, listen to the man. Anyway, because I don't get a tea for him that he doesn't even want. You got annoyed because I did not prepare the tea for you and you told you do not require the tea. You ever tried that at club? No, 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 no. The wife is now attacking the husband. The wife is telling, oh, see that man. Why you are behaving like this? I have not prepared the tea for you and you told you do not require it for you. Why you are getting annoyed? Then, he is, she is staring to the husband. Ever tried that at the club? Have, have you tried such thing at the club? George, the husband, tried what at the club? The husband couldn't understand. Tried what at the club? No, the wife. Going up to the bar and telling them, you don't want a glass of beer, but you are annoyed because they haven't already poured it out. The, 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 the wife is suggesting to the husband that go to the bar at your club and you, got, you, you should be very much annoyed with the bar people, with the waiter, because you do not want a cup of, uh, do not want a glass of beer, but you must be annoyed with them why they have not poured it out. Just the same that you told you do not require tea and you are getting annoyed that why the tea was not made or prepared for you. So do the same at your, at your bar. You know, at the bar, at your bar, at the club. Try that on them and see what you get and go there and do the same thing as you are doing right now. Create the scene there as you are doing this and you'll see what you will get from them. George, I don't know what you are talking about. George, you know, George is a bit dignified. I see here, solemn character. George is telling to the wife, I can't understand what you are talking about. Now wife is telling, they would laugh at you even more than they do now. Wife is telling, you know, wife ironically is attacking the husband. Wife is telling that they would laugh at you even more even uh, than they do now. The wife is telling if you do the same thing at the bar in your club, they would laugh at you. Means they would ironically laugh at you. They would make joke out of you as they do now. Means the wife wanted to tell that at the club, the other members, they actually laugh at you. They make joke with you. That's an insult. Now George, indignantly, indignantly means losing his patience, being impatient. Laugh at me. They don't laugh at me. Laugh at me. He is telling to his wife. The club people, the other members of the club, the member at the bar, the waiter, they don't laugh at me. Now, here, wife, of course they do. You ought to have found that out by this time. Anybody else would have done. You are one of their standing jokes, famous. They call you Pompey Umpey Pearson because they think you are so slow and pompous. You know? So, Pearson here, wife told this that yes. Of course they do, as if the wife challenged to, he, uh, to her husband. Of course they do. You ought to have found that out by this time. And the uh, wife is telling to the husband, you should have found this out. You should have found it, that other people laugh at you. Anybody else do that? Anybody, anybody else would, would have done? Anybody else would have found out in your place that they laugh at you? You know? You are one of their standing jokes. Now here, uh, Pearson means uh, wife is telling to the husband that you are one of their standing jokes. You are famous because you are the topic of their jokes. 
they call you pompium person because they think you are slow and pompous that is why they have given a name at your back pompium person you are called pompium person by them now question is how could Fitzgerald knew that Mr. George Pearson is called Pompeo Pearson. The same answer is very simple. You know, Mrs. Fitzgerald also goes to club, goes to nightclub, she drinks. So she had that first hand experience at what the other people actually call Mr. George Pearson at his back. Probably he was one of them in that group. She also, she, she also one of them in the group who called uh, Mrs. Uh, Mr. George Pearson, Pompey would be Pearson. And that is why being so sure, uh, she told to, uh, to her husband that people call Pompey would be Pearson at the back. Now George horrified. George actually, she was aghast. She could not believe it in any way. Neighbor, she shouted. Now wife, it's always bitten me why you should why you should want to spend so much time at a place where they are always laughing at you behind your back and calling you names now here the wife is giving that suggestion giving the listen to uh, to the husband here she's telling that it's always bitten me it always bitten me means i got surprised at these i cannot find the answer that why you would like to spend more time at a place where all the other people call you by name, all the other people insult you at your back, all the other people make joke with you, uh, out of you. Why? Leaving your wife at home night after night, wife who loves you so much, who does everything for you, who serves each and every order immediately, leaving that wife day after night after night you spend this time at club when other people at the club laugh at you and they call you in different names at your back i can't understand why do you do that instead of going out with her who doesn't make you like, look a fool or you should actually here fitzgerald is giving the suggestion to uh, you know, to uh, george pearson though george pearson could not understand that uh, see he is talking to fitzgerald you know, so here Fitzgerald is giving uh, the suggestion. I can't understand. Instead, instead of going out with her, you, you are not going out with your wife, who loves you so much, and who has a respect for, who 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 always had um, respect for you at her mind, who doesn't make look like a fool. Leaving that wife at home, you go every day at the nightclub. Sorry, where? Oh, sorry, where oh, yeah, people actually uh, call you in different name. Cyril enters right with a glass of milk in one hand and a thick slice of cake in the other. George, almost dazed, turns to him appealingly. Now at this juncture, Cyril, the son, came and uh, he is having a glass filled with milk in one hand. In the other hand, there is a thick slice of cake. I remember that uh, Cyril threatened uh, his mother that if you do not go to the kitchen, I should look after myself. Mother told us, you look at uh, yourself. So Cyril had gone to the kitchen and he had taken a glass of milk and a thick piece of cake with him. And uh, whenever he entered, um, his father, George Pearson, looked at him appealingly as if he wanted to know something from Cyril. George, here, Cyril, you have been with me to the club once or twice. No. He got actually father wanted Cyril to support him now father is telling to Cyril Cyril you have been with me to the club once or twice they don't laugh at me and call me Pompey Umpy person do they the father is asking to to his son that you know once or twice you have already gone with me in the club so they don't call me Pompey Umpy person they call me they don't laugh at me isn't it do they Cyril embarrassed hesitates Cyril actually got embarrassed. Um, Cyril hesitated for us to what to answer. Now father getting angrily. Go on, tell me, do they? Father wanted to know the answer from his son. And the answer should be that no, they don't call by your name. 
answer should be like this. The father expected that Cyril would answer, but no. But Cyril embarrassed. Well, yes, Dad, I'm afraid they do. Now, Cyril, Cyril actually told the truth. Yes, Dad, I'm afraid to tell you they do. They do means yes. The members of the club, they make joke with you and um, they call you different names. They call Pompium P. Pearson. So this name might be very important for your exam. So George slowly looks from one to other. I'm just looking there and there. Staggered so much, so much, uh, you know, bewildered, agitated, frustrated. Slowly, well, I'll be damned. I'll be damned means I'll be finished. I'll be finished. Because as if he could not tolerate this insult. He was, I told that he was a person who, who always gives lots of, uh, you know, importance to himself. So as if he could not tolerate this. So as if I'll be damned, he was telling. So today up to this, I feel you have understood. Next day, again, we will continue. And yes, before one, uh, before we should stop today, another thing that I want to tell you that uh, circular has come from CBSC for the celebration. Uh, this is the circular for the celebration of uh, Rashtriya Ekta Divas. What you need to do, you need to write an essay on Sardar Ballabhai Patel on the role that how uh, we used to uphold the integrity, the unity of our country. This is uh, on the birthday of Sardar Ballabha by Patel. So um, I should need to write an essay. And after writing, you should send it to a mail. Just you may take down the email. That is oer.bms at the red gmail.com. Oer.bms at the red gmail.com. I, I, I want you people to write this because you are having enough time at home. So what's the problem if you write this? Uh, I feel you should write an essay on Sardar Ballabhai Patel, you know, and send it to the mail oer.bms at the rate gmail.com. Thank you for joining my class. Bye bye today.